All right, guys. Hey, welcome to the Monday morning uh, podcast, classroom edition. And this one's going to be a little bit different. Typically, we dive into phone script, in-home leads, and we really kind of unpack and get into some practical things that you know you should be leaving the podcast thinking like, all right, I can elevate my game with that. I, I got my phone script a little bit more understood. I could tweak that. I could adjust that. My in-home, I can modify that. Or I, I've been lacking that. So that's kind of the goal. But today, I really want to kind of step into what it looks like from a financial aspect to get your business launched, right? For If you're anything like I am, when I got started in the business, my background had nothing to do with business. My background was employee. My parents were employees. Well, when I say parents, my dad was an employee. My mom acted like she was an employee, but come to find out she was a volunteer at a PTA. Mom is what she said, which is just volunteer, so she made no money. But, but I didn't have any kind of like business background, anybody exemplifying or teaching me or showing me what it looked like to build a business. So in essence, my mindset was pretty much just more lack, more just can I hold on to some pennies? And after a long period of time, maybe those pennies can become dollars. I didn't have the right perspective and thought process. Now, as a joint family first life, I started to understand that if I wanted to survive and succeed as an independent insurance agent, I had to understand some basic things to do to build my business up and create some financial freedom. And so I want to kind of go through some of these things that I believe that I've learned that would help you as well. And I'm going to start with some basic like baby steps, like you're kind of crawling. And then we're going to go through all the way up until, you know, what it looks like to really have a full sprint in building this thing and creating some great financial success for yourself. Okay. So, so to kind of start out rudimentary for a brand new agent, the first thing I suggest is to have two bank accounts. All right. A lot of times you get started in the business and you have just one bank account. And what that does is it causes you to not have a true handle on what's coming in and what's going out. So what you think is might, might, might not be. You might be like, dude, I don't know. I'm not doing very well. It's like, no, you just started to wear designer jeans. You know what I mean? Like prematurely. Like you got you to gotta go put back the Louis. Like it's, it's too premature. And see, in the beginning as you build a business, I know for myself as I started to have, I go out there and help a family. And maybe that client was paying, you know, uh, 88 bucks or 100 bucks a month. And it's 1200 bucks a year in premium. Right, and, and I look at my commission, if my commission just says it's at 100% and, you, and you're getting paid after advancement of 75%, like 800 bucks, well, well for me, if, if I just helped a client in that scenario, I wasn't used to making $800 in an hour helping the family like that. I was used to making like nine bucks an hour. So I started thinking like, dude, retirement is right around the corner, baby. You know what I mean? I, I remember hiring this agent, no kidding, and uh, he, he helped like three, four families, got, got paid, and uh, for like the next three weeks, we didn't hear from him. And come to find out, he went to Mexico on a bender, went out and blew it all. Half the families didn't keep the policy, and he thought like, man, this is a scam. I'm out of here, right? And so, so you got to be, be disciplined. There's some financial disciplines to have as you start your business. The first financial discipline is to have two bank accounts. What you want to do with the two bank accounts is all the money that you have coming in from your business, it goes into one bank account. You sit back and calculate what do you need to live on. Now, everybody's nut is different as far as what they need to make, what their expenses are, right? But you got to take a look at yours. So if you say, Paul, my expenses are, say they're you know $6,000 a month. So now you know that I've got to pay myself $1,500 a week just to cover my basic needs, my expenses. So every single week, I would transfer money from my account that my business was, the, the commissions were going into, transfer $1,500 from that account into my personal account. But in my business account, only commissions went in there and only, only leads came out of there. Outside of that, there's really not much as far as business expenses for a brand new person that's getting started. All right, so that allowed me to understand what it looked like. Now, as I did that, the business account eventually is going to start to grow. And you're not going to have the first big mistake, which is going out there and changing your lifestyle and not even really being aware of it because everything's going into one account. So now you can pay yourself that same low calorie diet, that low calorie income and use it to build your business. The one person I can think of that did this probably at the highest level, that did it, did it with excellence, was Andrew. 
So he was, get, he was got out there helping 20 families a month, doing well. He had really no nut to crack. He was single, 18 years old. Uh, his, his rent was like a thousand bucks a month. And that was it. He had this old Saturn that had like 582,000 miles on it. And, and I think he got it for $222. Like, like that, and it was paid off, right? So that's all he had. I would, now he's out there, business accounts growing. He's transferring over just enough to pay his bills, which is really nothing. And I remember going to his house and, um, and at the time he, he, he was, you know, kind of, he was a bachelor guy. You know, he's married now with, with Alice and AC, but this is back when he was a bachelor. And uh, I'd go over there and be like, dude, like you got no carpet in your house, bro. I feel like I walked in and this is before concrete was cool. And it wasn't true concrete. It was like, there was like glue still everywhere. You know what I mean? Like, it wasn't like it was finished. It looked like, you know, like raccoons went in there and shredded up his, he had patches where carpet still was there. I said, dude, what do you, what, like, what is this, dude? He's like, yeah, let's build my business, man. I said, what do you tell the girls when they come over? He's like, I just tell them it's underneath construction. So, all right. Well, then I go over like seven months later and it still looks like that. I'm like, dude, what do you tell the girls? It's been seven months. He's like, I just tell them, maybe it's a long construction project, you know? <laughs> But, but he had the concept down, like, instead of me getting carpet, which he could easily do, like, the business account continued to grow, he continued to look at areas to put back into his business. So he ended up having two staff members that were working before he ever put carpet in his house. Because he'd rather take that, invest in the business, have his staff members go out there, start recruiting Start to help with some administrative stuff, whether that's back end support with policies, client follow up, and that allowed him to go out there, see more families, generate more income, and build that account even higher. Does that make sense? So in the beginning, what you don't want to do, and and I mean I could give you story after story of that that same thing that I mean after like four years in the business, doing really well, having a good business, I was still driving my my Hyundai Sonata. You know what I mean? Living in a in a KB home but I was building my business up, right? Um, and so you wanna have that understood that if there's time to divide and there's a time to devour. And what I mean by that is this, in a business, you, there's, a, there's a longer devouring process if you wanna have a much greater dividing period of time. Devouring is, man, I'm just getting after it. I'm nonstop sacrificing, paying the price, going all in, sacrificing sleep, sacrificing time with, with loved ones, family, sacrificing different areas, saying no to all these different things, because man, I'm devouring. I'm getting after something with just relentless pursuit. I wanna attack and grow this business. I'm, de I'm, de I'm devouring. And then there's a time once you've devoured for so long that you've built it up, well now it's time to divide. Now like, man, do I wanna go live here? Would I like to drive this? I want, I, do, what, do I wanna go do that, get back? Like there's times and seasons but what I see is, too often, is that a new agent, they, they, they get the seasons wrong. When it's a devouring season, they try to divide as they devour. And if you're dividing while you're devouring, you're never able to devour at the same pace. Does that make sense? So just kind of understand what those seasons look like. Delayed gratification. Um, the other thing is this. You want to have some like non-negotiable disciplines, okay? What that looks like is, for, for one, the time you purchase leads each week and what you, how much you purchase with leads. If you said, Paul, give me the one greatest breakthrough that I see with, with, with an agent that goes from barely getting by, maybe they're helping you know, 10 families a month to they start helping 30, 40 families a month. Like what's the biggest breakthrough? And, and, and the biggest benefit I think I have for most agents is like, I just have a great vantage point. I work with so many phenomenal leaders, so many phenomenal producers. I mean, a lot of times I feel like I'm standing on the shoulders of giants because we've got so many phenomenal people. But I do have a great vantage point to look at all these groups. And I can tell you this much, as I've worked hand in hand, one on one with a lot of agents, the single biggest breakthrough is the amount of leads and consistency to which they purchase leads, by far. It's the same thing for even Andrew Taylor. Like he quit multiple times and then restarted. And the thing that finally changed, it wasn't like all of a sudden he had the right phone script or he just, man, he had that in-home down. He just started having more families to call. He had more shots to take. And so once he made that decision to be consistent, 
it started to elevate. Now, for somebody that's joining the business, and this is why this is the number one breakthrough, it's difficult to, to take action on that which we know. You go to a meeting, you get on a podcast, and it's pretty quick. You start to identify like, man, I should probably invest like $1,500 a week in leads if I want to go out there and help 40 families. Like you hear it like your first day. Like you're exposed to it immediately. But the question I've got is how long did it take you to do that? And, and I remember just to give you some perspective on where I was at as far as this employee mindset, which is how, how can I hold on as much as I possibly can? You know what I mean? It's like the squirrel with the nut. Like you don't want to let go of it. And then all of a sudden that's how you get trapped. I remember getting going and I would buy leads on like Monday. The next week I'd buy leads on Wednesday. The next week I'd buy leads on Friday. And the next week I'd buy them on Monday again. Which if you guys don't see what takes place there is you're gonna skip a week. Does that make sense? Because instead of buying a Monday, 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 it's Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Monday. So I, I've skipped a week because I'm buying them later on in the week. And so I would do that and I'd think like, man, I'm coming up. Like, I just came up on like a thousand bucks. No, the question is how much did that cost me by not investing the right amount into it? And, and that was the same thing with Andrew and I could give you three, all these different Hall of Fame producers where they would try to figure out how to cut back and get around and work around. And, and I remember Andrew being like, dude, I got only $300 in leads this week. But why? Well, because I got a bunch of people that I didn't pick up last week, which makes sense. I got all these people that didn't pick up, so let me scale back how many resources I need for this week. But the reality is, the people that didn't pick up last week, the fools don't pick up this week. They're professional non-picker-uppers. They don't pick up the phone. So now you're just frustrated calling all these people again that don't pick up the phone. So now you're like, ain't nobody answered the phone. No, no, people answer the phone, you're just calling the same people that don't answer the phone. And you barely added more resources, so only that small percentage of the people that you just added actually answer the phone. They've already answered the phone, now you're calling that section that don't answer the phone and prior week section that don't answer the phone. So the reality is if you could be consistent where you say, man, every Monday, or maybe every Sunday, every Wednesday, I purchase this amount of leads. Now, it has to become a non-negotiable. If it's not a non-negotiable, you'll let your emotions and feelings dictate what you choose to do. And you'll try to come out with rationale, rationale to, to support that. Like, well, I didn't have many people pick up last week. Or I could call some more market this week. You're just trying to find logic to support your, your lack of discipline in the very thing that's the number one breakthrough for most agents. Does that make sense? So, so this is a big deal to have that non-negotiable where every week you do it. Now, I know you've probably heard that before, but I wonder if you've actually asked yourself, am I doing that? Like every week, if I go back the last six, seven, eight weeks, have I invested the right amount consistently every twi you know, twice a week, right before dial days? Have you done that? And if the answer is no, then I guarantee you, if you do that, that's gonna be one of the biggest things that will help get your money right, that'll help get your income right, okay? All right, next thing is this. Always looking for like additional policies too. So for me, I understand if I got the right amount of resources purchased each week, I've already got that right, okay? So let's just say, Paul, I got that. I got that down. That's the first thing you need down because your business is what you got to feed, right? But if I can go out there and find additional policies, that's where profitability jumps up because my investment it's the right investment, that's the first thing, the right amount to resource every week. But if I can keep that at the right amount and then go pick up an extra two or three policies instead of helping 10 families, maybe it's 13, 14, because I'm picking up additional policies, that's where profitability goes up. That's where you can start to do even a little bit more as far as staff and these different things, right? And so looking for additional policies. Now, how do, how do, I, how do you do that? Well, when you're sitting with the client, looking at around the, the environment, like do you have, is there a spouse that you could help? I wonder how many families that you've helped in the past three months, six months, that you only helped one spouse, and you kind of asked, but didn't really ask, and they just kind of expressed that they just wanted the one spouse covered. But I wonder if you went back and sat with them, and you had a conversation and, and reviewed what they had, made them feel good about the protection they put in place, that you helped them with in the first place, and they started asking questions like, well, if your, other, if your spouse, if Mary passes, who's gonna cover the final expenses? Who's gonna take care of the kids? 
What does that look like? You know, Bob Mary, what most clients do in your situation um, is, is they have a big plan set up on the breadwinner, just like you guys. But what most families say is like, Paul, well, listen, if my, other, if my spouse passed, I wouldn't want to have to come up with expenses or, or money to, to, for the final expenses. I wouldn't want to have to like go to work the next day. I don't want to have some time to breathe, to mourn, to recover and get through that. So what most clients do, just like myself, is we have a, a significantly smaller plan, but a plan in place for the spouse because who knows who's going to go first. Would that be important to you like it is most families? And guess what you're going to get? Yes. Well, now you could go write that additional policy. Does that make sense? Referrals, asking for referrals in the, in the house. That also helps with additional policies. More market. Like if you're going to, to you know, a church, now I'm not out there passing out cards at the mall like, hey, you, need, you, need, you got life insurance? No? Oh, you need, you're going to die one day. Here, take my card. Like I don't do that. That doesn't work good. But if you're going to a church or you, you're coaching or you're, you're, you know, your kids play different sports, like the people you, you know, come into, if you're really passionate about this business, you're going to have a conversation with them. Now, if you don't, what I would say is that's kind of like a passion test. Maybe your passion isn't high enough, and because your passion isn't high enough, you're not making the sacrifices necessary to build your business, meaning that you're not going to that last appointment late at night. You're not going to door knock. You're not staying at the office until 9 o'clock to book those last appointments because it is what it is. I'm just paying my bills. I'm good. Well, you're always going to be just paying your bills. You're going to have to do that for the rest of your life opposed to building up your passion, understand the value that we bring to these families, letting that passion arise. And when that passion arises, now your willingness to sacrifice will go up. And if your sacrifice is higher, you have just higher short-term pain, but you're going to produce the long-term gains and the long-term benefits to eventually get yourself to that financial freedom. So, so this stuff is, is really important to look at those additional policies. It's kind of like when I fly, I got five kids. So when I fly, you get all the stewardess come, come to you and like, hey, listen, the oxygen mask, come down. You put yours on first, then you put the kids on. Now, why do they say that? Well, they say that because if I'm dead, I ain't putting on nobody's oxygen mask. Does that make sense? So, so if I, they all fall and I got five kids, the odds of me saving all five before I run out of oxygen and die is not very likely because at least two of my kids are going to fight me as if I'm trying to like mess with their hair or something, even though the plane's going down. So it's going to take too long. And then all of a sudden they'll know who daddy liked the most because it's whoever I put the mask on first, right? Then I've, un I've uncovered myself. But, but if it goes down and I put my mask on first, now I can save all my kids. See, what you got to understand if you've not been in business before, that's how it works in your business. You have to put the mask on your business first because if your mask isn't on your business and your business is what puts your income mask on yourself, then what's going to happen? You're going to die. It's like an agent that says, man, I got, I got paid and I went out and paid all my credit cards and my debt and stuff like that. It's like, well, now if you don't have more money for, for leads that week, what are you going to have to go do? You have to go put everything back on your dang credit cards. And now you got a dog fight to get more. Now, who, who do you call? So now you got the debt on the credit cards back. And they got no people to call. Now, I'm not going to tell you what to do, but I can tell you what I did. When I got started in the business and I was just trying to get things moving, I didn't pay my rent my, my first month because I had no income. I thought I could, I could either take that, that money and do that with it, pay the rent, or I can get leads. And if I got leads and I could go out there and help four or five families, well, now I could pay the rent and have enough to keep buying leads. It's the same concept, putting the oxygen mask on yourself first is essential for your building your business. What I, mean, what I mean is putting the oxygen mask on your business first is essential so you could survive in this business. And so you got to make sure you get that right. Because it's easy to sit back and be emotional and think like, oh, I got I to I gotta take care of this and this and this. It's like, you wanting to run a business or do you want to just go get a job that you know you can pencil, you know, you, could, you can pencil it all out and say, okay, this is going to pay my bills, but you're never able to get above that. Does that make sense? So important to have these non-negotiables in place because everything works a little bit. Nothing works all the time. And, and what you'll realize is this, if you're out there doing these things like, a, you know, disciplining yourself where I always door knock before my last set of, my, before my, my first appointment, 
or I'm always door knocking between my appointments. Or I always get to the office at 7 a.m. make my first dial at 7.30. Or I never leave the office until I've got my appointments booked or it's nine o'clock at night. If you make these non-negotiables in place, what you realize is that it'll, it'll work out in areas that you didn't see it necessarily working out. Like all of a sudden your week is saved and you got destroyed off the appointment you booked, but it was that door knock that you did at, at 7.30 a.m. before your nine o'clock appointment that you're able to go out to serve that family and it turned your whole week around, right? Or if you're always talking to people about the Family First Life opportunity, what you realize is, man, that, that one week, it was a tough week, but my one guy I hired, I recruited, and he got started, he helped 15 families, and that, that override, that, that, that kept me moving in the right direction. So if you're doing all the right things all the time, it's gonna work out. I was just on a call, I said, man, like this is like baking a cake. If you do all the things and put all the ingredients in, you're gonna get it baked. It'll, it'll work out. You might not know like, why did that, what, what, what ingredient made it rise? What ingredient made it taste? I, I don't know. But if they're all in there, it'll all work together. When one works better than the other, it'll all still produce the fruit you want for that week. So doing all the things all the time will allow you to have more financial stability as you build your business, right? All right, so next thing is this. You wanna create environments where you're more inclined to grow, okay? So like for me, I didn't have any kind of identity that said I was gonna be successful in this business, right? I had no background, no experience, nothing like that. What I knew I needed to do was put myself in an environment where that could come out of me, where, where I could develop that, where that could grow. Because the reality is this, God's given all of you guys the gift to be great. There's no prerequisite to be all of a sudden phenomenal here. The prerequisite is you just to be willing and, 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 and being humble and hungry to submit yourself and put yourself in an environment that allow the things that are holding you back, whether that's a limited lack mindset and create one out of, a, that out of abundance and that really tees you up to see yourself as the person you need to be to go out there and see the success that you wanna have. That's what's really essential. And so for me, I wanted to put myself in environments where, where the right habits would be formed, okay? So if, if I was working at my house, I could easily say, man, I'm saving X amount because I'm working from my house. Well, the question is, what is it costing me? Because when I'm working in my house, all the cues go off related to me being in my house. It was interesting, like I remember literally working in my, my master bedroom, because I only had two bedrooms. So my master bedroom was where my desk was, because my other bedroom was where my daughter was. And I'd always feel kind of like, just like overly relaxed and tired when I was working in my master bedroom. Well, it's because that's where I go to sleep. It's like my body's like, it, it's a trigger, it's a cue. Like when I walk into my bedroom, like in the beds here, like that's what I do. It's like I'm working in my living room. Well, if I'm in my living room, and I typically am kicking it back, watching TV on my couch. That's what kind of state of mind I'm going to put in. That cue is going to take place, and I'm going to be distracting and operating from that mindset, those emotions and feelings that are tied to what that environment typically leads me to, right? And so what's essential to go out there and really kind of build yourself up to build your income up is to put yourself in good environments, right? There was a study that was done by Harvard, and it had these like, they took these different, the, the, these different cells and it put them into like different Petri dishes, right? And, and the whole experiment was to see what would take place if they put them into these different dishes and the environment was different. And what took place is they put one into one dish and it, it became like bone, bone marrow. They put it into another one, it was like a fat cell. And it, and it created these different cells. It was the same exact one, but, but when they put them into different Petri dishes, they grew and became something different. And that's exactly how we are, exactly the same way. So I wanted to find environments that would cause me to bring out the best in me, that would bring out the, the successful person, the person that's running a business. I wanted that to be birthed, does that make sense? So, so different environments that can help you with that is, is understanding that if you're plugged in to an office location, any of them, right, doesn't matter, where you got people to kind of rub elbows with and connect with, you're gonna be telling yourself like this, now when I step in this door, my cue's going off, it's time to work, right? It's time to focus, it's time to put, put away distractions and, and book appointments, hit my goal. And then when I leave that environment, then I could go be more present 
and the next environment, whether that's being with my family, being with my kid, whatever that might be. So I think for me in the beginning, I, under, I, did, I underestimated this. And again, I'm gonna give you guys one of my big failures because I, I started out with this lack mindset. Like, could I, how much can I hold on to? I never looked at what was beneath the, the, the surface. So I thought, if I, if I work from my house, I'm gonna save some office money. So I remember my, we, we, we kept building a business. I ended up having like three, three staff members all working at my house, right? And this wasn't a big house. I remember my wife came down one stairs one day. She's like, hey, hey, sweetheart. I said, what's, what's up, babe? She said, um, like, is it, do you think I'm ever gonna get arrested? I said, for what? She's like, for, for squatting. I feel like I'm a squatter in an office. Like, do you think they're ever gonna come get me because we live in an office? And, and I don't know if that's legal. Is it legal to live in an office? Because this is obviously an office space. And I was like, okay, I got it. I get, I get it. She's like, could you please get an office? Like, I can't, I, can't, I gotta come downstairs. I gotta be all like done up. I can't, I got all these kids. Like, what are we doing? And, and I thought in my mind, like I was saving some money. And it wasn't only until I actually got an office space where my production and volume, it grew more in that 90 day cycle than it had really ever done before. And it was, to me, I thought, there's no way. I'm disciplined, I'm focused, man. Like I go to work in my home office, I get my work done. But it wasn't the same. All of a sudden, the way I saw myself started to change. I got an office now. I'm, I'm, I'm a business owner because I was battling how I was brought up. I was battling what I knew about business and, and I was battling this lack mindset that was developed from what I had experienced, my upbringing and everything else. And so I was needed to show myself that no, I am that. And then all of a sudden in that environment, I started to make the right choices. I started to, 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 to say no to more of the distractions. It was easier for me to put down my phone and I look through Instagram and all these different things because I knew, hey, I'm focused on working right now. I'm focused on working right now. And then I could also put in some different parameters like, man, once I hit my goal, I can, I can leave the office. I, I've hit my goal for the day. I've hit my daily activity goals. So it made a massive, massive difference. See, I think it's often where for myself, when it came to understanding the investment and the growth of this business is, is to, to look at things in such a way where it's like, we look at the big picture. Like if I, if I get referrals, then I can, I can make a sale and it's worth it if I can make an additional sale from getting a referral. Just to give you an example. The, 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 the best way to look at it is I get at least this. What do, I, what do I minimally get if I get referrals? Or if I get referrals, what I get minimally is a stronger client because in, in the process of me getting a referral, I start talking about Mary about, look, listen, I know how important this is for you guys and let me just clarify it. You know, I know that a lot of clients think that I've got you know, all these appointments to go to every day and that's true. I've got a ton of clients to go see and that's true, but you're a client of mine and I make a commitment to every one of my clients that I'll always put you first. And so what I'll do for you guys is this. I know how important this protection is for you. I'm sure you have somebody you know, like a loved one, that this would be important to as well. I'll make some time to give them a call and let them know that you know, they're, you're a contact um, or they're a contact to reach out to me if, they ever, if anything ever happens to you so I'm easily notified. But also I'll let them know um, if they want me to review their policy or give them some options, I'm here to support and help them. And uh, as a field underwriter, I could, I, I could do that for them. So, so who's the first person that pops in your mind? Now, the, the worst thing I get, the, the, the minimal thing I get and going through and getting referrals is that I'm re-solidifying how important this is for the client. Does that make sense? So it's worth it just for that. The maximum thing I get is if I actually help the client. You understand what I'm saying? Or I actually help another referral. It's the same thing with anything. You can say, man, if I got an office, it'd be great if, if I got you know, agents coming in and, I, and they, they were able to kind of meet me at my office. If I started interviewing people at my office, like that would, that would be, that'd be worth it. No, 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 no. What's the minimal thing you get? The minimal thing you get is worth the price tag of the office space. The minimal thing you get is walking in and your identity starting to shift and elevate to what it needs to be in order to make the choices you need to make to see the success you want to have. Now I start to realize that, man, I'm a business owner. Minimally, I get more focused because there's no way you're as distracted here as you are in all these different environments that you've already had established different cues, routines, and habits. 
So minimally, just by that, it's worth the price tag. Minimally it is. You can say, well, once I get, you know, what, what, once I get, you know, to this level, then it makes sense. Minimally, what you get is just by having the office expense, maybe you're more likely to go out and do that one more door knock. Stay at the office a little later because, man, I got to get this office space taken care of. So minimally, I wonder if you go out and help two or three more families that you wouldn't have never helped before because of it. Or minimally, maybe an agent walks in and they see that you have an office space. They're have, they're, maybe they're a little bit faster than you. Like they're getting going quicker, right? They're seeing results faster. And because you've got one, they're more likely to get one. And because they get one, all of a sudden they go out there and take it to the next level. They start helping twice the amount of families. They start holding themselves because maybe their whole big struggle was where they were working at was toxic. Or maybe their mindset was toxic and they had these old belief systems that said, I can't build nothing. So what I'm saying guys is like, what you wanna look at in a business is not, well, if this works out in the big picture, but what's the, the, the limited, the minimal thing that you'll get by doing it? Does that make sense at all? So if you look at it like that, it'll make a bigger difference. It'll make a big difference for you. No different than buying leads, right? So you can say, well, man, I'll, if I got more leads, then if I, could, if I could help this many more families, then it would make sense. Well, what if you don't help that many more families, but just by investing more in leads, right, you have more shots and the skill builds faster and the skill all of a sudden gets to where it needs to be for you to become that much better on the phones and that leads you to helping a ton of families down the road, right? So even investing in resources and leads, or maybe because you've invested more in leads, that you actually show up and you, you come to the office when you need to because I've got to work these leads. And because you come to the office when you're supposed to, 7 a.m. earlier, you have that extra time to maybe connect with another agent before you start making your dials. That other agent gives you some tips and feedback that takes you to the next level. What I'm saying is there's always stuff beneath the, 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 the surface. And sometimes the stuff below the surface it matters more than the stuff that's visibly seen. Like, oh, this would make sense if this. No, sometimes there's stuff below the surface that's worth the price tag to take that step when it comes to investing and building your business in the first place. So that, that's the stuff that you wanna kinda look at. Even hiring staff, I'll give you an example. So when I got started, um, it was all paper apps, okay? Now, if you guys have seen me draw on a whiteboard, you probably don't respect me anymore because I draw like a three and a half year old that got held back in school two years. Like it looks, it's terrible, okay? So when I started getting these paper apps going, I was like, dude, I can't, like this is way too much work for me to even try to like get a, like a J written out correctly. It was just, it was hard. So I called the companies like, are you guys gonna approve these things? Like where's my money at? Like, well, with all due respect, Paul, we can't, we can't underwrite what we can't read. I was like, Fair enough, I mean, I guess that makes sense. So, so early on, when I was just getting going, I hired my first uh, assistant right out of the gate. Now, I wasn't in a position where you could say that made sense. I was, I was literally my first month in the business and I was at a 55% commission, okay? And it was 2000 and, and like seven, 2008, the great recession's taking place. I, I, mean, I was not in a position I, I was trying to, it was my first month in a house. It was the first time I ever had rent payment. Honest to God, first time I'd ever made a rent payment in my life because I was 19. It was my first house. My daughter was just born, but I had my first assistant. So why did you do that? Because I wasn't confused that if I spent 10 hours scrubbing apps, following the company, if I could take that 10 hours and invest it into booking appointments and if I sat with just three more clients, and I helped just one more family that it would well outweigh it. Now, above that, I was also very understood that minimally, even if I didn't use that time as wisely, like I ended up doing stupid stuff for the extra 10 hours that I had my assistant taken off my plate. Minimally, I started to grow as an employer because I never thought of myself as an employer. How would I? All I did was work a job before. I started to learn how to become a person that could lead, that could, that could give somebody roles and goals. I knew how to follow up. 
I, there's a, a process to be had to go through. I mean, I, I probably need to find my first like 20 staff members I hired and, and just send them a letter like, I'm sorry for ruining your life and send them like stimulus checks every month because I didn't know what I was doing. But in order to get to know how to, what I was doing, in order to progress to that, I had to take the first step. See, and if, if you look at things the right way, you're more likely to take that first step. So if I look at it and say minimally, even if I hired the wrong person and it doesn't go right and they're not any good or whatever and I made the wrong choice, minimally, I bet you, you're gonna learn how to better handle that situation in the future. I bet you, you start to elevate who you see yourself to be. I bet you, you're gonna know how to have those conversations when they matter mo most as you continue to progress and grow. I bet you, minimally, you'll get that. Does that make sense? All right, last thing I wanna cover with you guys that I think is really important is, is the personal growth to lift your lid, okay? So, so for me, there were certain things I bought into as I grew up. Like anybody ever have their dad be like, or their parents, hey, you ask for something, like, hey fool, what do you think, like money grows, money don't grow on trees? You see any $100 bills hanging on that tree out there? Money don't grow, anybody ever have their parents say that? Or is that just me? All the time, money don't grow on trees. Well, that, that's a lack mindset. I don't know about you, but I, I, I'm trying to look for money growing on my trees. Like, like they, they, oh, it could grow. It could definitely come. And so little things that were said that got me to have this poverty mindset, which was like, hold on to everything. How can I save everything? How can I just, it, it, was, it was the wrong mindset. So I had to go through a process of, of changing out the poverty mindset that I, that I had been exposed to from the, the words that I had heard, my upbringing, and I had to incline my ear to an, a thought process that was gonna be abundant, a thought process that could say, man, you can make a significant income, man, you can make a significant difference, man, you can, you can give away more than, than people in your family had ever made in a year. Like, you, you can create an abundant mindset. The way you create that abundant mindset is by good association. And so early on, I had a personal growth plan, okay? The personal growth plan was like, man, every single day, I gotta read 20 pages a day, every day. And really, when I got started, it was like just five pages a day. If I could read a book every two months, and then it became, if I could just, you know, get through a book a month. And I was very regimented and disciplined with this because I started to see myself look at things differently. I started to see myself respond to things differently to start to develop an abundant mindset. Because early on, I wouldn't. Man, I can't afford that. Man, I can't do that. Man, I can't do this. Man, that ain't gonna happen. It was a lack mindset. But as I started to read and develop and grow, I started to lift that financial lid that was placed on myself through the different exposures and experiences that I had gone through. And see, you have one too. It's like a, it's like a thermostat. It's no different if we set this room at 70 degrees and all of a sudden, man, you start killing it. Man, I helped that one family, dude. I got that annuity, crushed it, hired this one agent. They went out there, served 30 families. Like all of a sudden, boom, it pops. Like it's getting hot up in here, man. We're, we're, we're moving. Well, what happens is if that, that window opens and the heat comes in and it gets it from 70 degrees to 80 degrees, what happens? The AC kicks on. Because my thermostat, my financial lid is set at 70 degrees. So the AC kicks on, and what does that look like? Oh, I can't make it to the office this day. I mean, I, I know I need to go to that last appointment, but I got Billy's cousin's stepsister's ex-girlfriend's birthday party. You know, I don't know really who he is, but I got invited somehow. I gotta go to that. Or, or you know, like, I know I need to dial until my appointments are booked at nine, but to like, dude, it's hamburger helper tonight, bro. <laughs> I mean, like, you know, we got, what do you want me to do? Like, do I gotta go get some food? Like, you start, you start doing that and you don't even realize it. It's subconscious because the financial lid you set on yourself, you can't see it, but you also can't get past it unless you intentionally develop yourself and lift it with your thought process, with your belief systems, with the way you see things, right? That's what's gonna take place. All of a sudden, man, I don't know how I had such a bad chargeback. Well, I wonder, I wonder if you hit your financial lid and you got more in your account than you're used to and you're out there figuring out ways 
to get that, that window's opened up, so you're figuring out ways to get back to what your thermostat's set at. Now it's the same thing the other way. If, you're, if your financial you know, thermostat is set at this level, <clears throat> 70 degrees, it could be 80 grand, whatever it is for you. If all of a sudden it gets really bad, right? The, it, it's cold. The window opens up, it goes from 70 degrees to 60. You're like, you're shivering up in there. Like, dude, it's freezing up in here. What'll happen is you'll figure out all of a sudden how to go out there and find an extra cell, right? Hire that extra agent, make an extra, that extra door knock. You're gonna find a way. I don't know how it happened, man, but I, I all of a sudden got, I got, I got things back and going. But you're always gonna float around that 70 degrees. The goal is how can you continue to lift that, where you just lift it all the way off, where there's no thermostat on it. You're just out there killing it. Like you don't, you don't self-sabotage when things go better than what they're used to going. You expect it, you build upon it. Well, that's gotta first take place internally. See, the income, the sales, the no sales, the chargebacks, or the big annuity, all these things that take place, that's all external. What takes place to really allow those to happen at a much higher level is what happens internally. So if you've got a good you know, system in place to lift your financial lid, like, man, I'm reading books of people that have an abundance mindset that help me grow personally, develop. Man, I'm watching podcasts, listening to podcasts, and hearing people's perspective that doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me because I've not been exposed to an abundant mindset. But as I continue to plug in and plug in and plug in and plug in, what you don't realize is, man, you're lifting that financial lid up. You're, you're lifting it up. So when you go out there and make these sales, you don't start making wrong choices. You continue, to, you continue to move up. And this is essential. I'll give you an example. There's like, it's like 90%, and I might be off on the set, but it's close to something like that, of people that win the lottery that in like 24 months are bankrupt. Win the lottery. Like they went out and won 20 million, 30, 40 million dollars. And within like 48 months, they're bankrupt. But why is that? What's the thermostat? They don't realize it. It's subconscious. You might say, well, that, that doesn't make any, how does that happen? Pretty easy. All of a sudden, you got all your boys that are looking for some extra cash. And I got extra cash. I could spare 500 grand here, get you a house. Oh, I'm going to go buy a house on the ocean. I got, you know, I got 100 million. I just put $20 million down. And they don't even realize because they don't, they're not intentional. They're subconsciously doing this. Heck, property taxes on $20 million house. Do the math on that, right? What's 1% of 20 million? Right? 200 grand? So you're going to pay 200 grand a year for a paid off house. All of a sudden, boom, they're back to where they're at. The problem is they're back there, but what came with that is shame and guilt. Because, man, how could I let that happen? How could, how, how could I? So now they're left way worse off than they were in the first place, which is why there's such a high rate of, of depression and suicide linked to somebody that's won the lottery because it's you typically always gone in that short period of time. See, you have to internally grow to be able to handle that, to be able to know what that looks like. That comes from the voices you hear and the things you see. So surrounding yourself in great association, getting around people that, can, that, 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 are, that are abundant minded, that speak abundant thoughts, they speak abundant talk. See, what you don't want to do is go out there and cancel your abundant mindset that you're starting to develop with a lack talk. Like, what comes out of your mouth? Are you speaking good things? Are you declaring good things? Are you saying, man, I'm going to go out there and I'm going to help 20 families. Man, I deserve this. Or are you always looking at the negative? Because a lack mindset, that's birth. That's produced from fear. I might not have enough. What if this doesn't work out? What if these leads don't work out? What if these families don't buy? What if these families don't keep it? What if this takes place? And you're never going to build an abundant career. You're never going to build financial freedom if you're stuck looking through a lack lens. You've got to change it out. You've got to develop and grow. So, so a good personal growth plan is probably one of the best things that's going to really serve you and serve you well in growing and growing your business. And so this is the stuff, guys, that I, that I hope makes sense. Realize that some of the stuff, once you, once you step into it in faith, and faith is like, if you knew it was already going to happen, that wouldn't take any faith. That's not faith. Faith is having confidence in what you hope for, assurance in what you don't, not, you don't see. 
That's faith. You don't see it yet. Right? It'd be easy if I was like, listen, Jay, Jeremiah, man, I'm telling you, dude, you're going to have this amount come in your account if you go do this. And I showed it to you. Like you were able to like time, tr you would be, it'd be easier for you to do the things. But it takes faith, dude. And the reality is when you start making choices that are uncomfortable, that, that, that doesn't make a lot of sense, whether that's hiring your first assistant, like I did, dude, I figured out a way to go out there and make those extra sales because it put me in a position where I was more inclined to make the right choices and create the right disciplines because now I got to pay for the staff minimum. Now I got to pay the payroll. So now I was more likely to say yes to the door knocks when I didn't want to drive that hour and, I, and it's seven o'clock. I was more likely to say yes to that opposed to no because I've got that to take care of. And because I said yes to that because I had that to take care of, I started to say yes to it consistently. And over a period of time, that became what? A habit. And so now I got more of the right habit. And see, the difference between somebody that's got financial success and a person that doesn't have any is the person with financial success does consistently the things that the, 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 the lack, broke people do only occasionally. The successful people financially, they do it consistently. They consistently consistently devour. They consistently get after it. They consistently just pay themselves what they need and continue to build their business. And then eventually, because it's done with consistency, they've formed the right habits to produce the right fruit, not just externally, but also internally. So when the fruit comes, it doesn't rot away due to neglect and self-sabotage. It continues to produce more in likeness because the abundant mindset is also through habits consistently been established and so this is the stuff if you want to go take it to the next level these are the things i've really learned through stepping through the last like 15 years coming from a person that had a lack mindset that had a poverty mindset that man if i could just get enough if i could just have enough to go into this mindset of man there's plenty enough for everybody and i'm going to go out there and help and give, and give back more than I ever thought I could earn. That comes from an abundant mindset. So guys, I hope this served you and served you well. Make sure to like, subscribe, share this. This might make a difference in somebody else that gets to, to watch it because of your simple share. Also comment below, every single week we give out $250 in free lead money to four uh, agents. And so maybe that's you this week, guys. Make it a massive week, be strong, stay steadfast, take care. What's going on everybody? We're going to give away some leads. If you commented on last week's video, which is playing right over here, you're automatically entered to win 250 bucks worth of leads today. We're picking four lucky winners. So leave a comment on this video, which is playing right now, right down below, and you could be entered to win into next week's drawing on next week's podcast. Without further ado, let's see who won this week. Our first winner for 250 bucks worth of leads is... Amanda Day, great as always. Our second winner is Ralph Ayala. These trainings never fail to bring a lot of wisdom. Thank you. Our third winner is Jorge. Thanks for the video. This video helped me with my mindset. And our fourth and final winner is Jay Her. Holy cow, I am where Brent was. Someone in their second year and struggling somewhat. I needed to hear this. Forgot plan B. It's me. Guys, it's that simple. Leave a comment about how this video helped you, about how it helped you get your mindset right, how you are going to be able to help more families because of this, and then you could possibly win 250 bucks worth of leads. It's that easy. You've got nothing to lose. So leave a comment right down below. Winners, get in contact with Victoria. Her phone number is going to be right over here. And make sure that you're signed up with WorkSpots. If you're not already signed up with WorkSpots, sign up with the Apple Valley office. And guys, we'll see you next week. Leave a comment, make it a big week, and we'll see you next time. Take care.